Hey guys, it's Nadia from Leadia Designs, and today we are making this super cool washi tape geode style coasters. Uh, you guys know how much I love the washi tape, and I want to see if I can make a geode out of it. And I'm also going to show you guys some paint that I have been using for a little while, not so much in resin, but uh, I want to show you that as well. So the first thing I did is I poured some resin with white mica powder uh, mixed into it, and I pour that into this coaster mold in a thin layer and I let that cure. Now we're ready to go ahead and add our design. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my washable marker and I'm just going to draw out the guidelines of where I want the lines of my geo to, to land. So um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, obviously we can change these lines as we go, but it's just kind of giving us an idea of where we want things to to end up and I'm using the other coaster that I've already made as a guideline. So this way I'm referencing that and I'm just wanting to make sure that I'm getting the same amount of lines and colors in this set as well. And obviously they don't need to be perfect just because, you know, these are geodes. So each one can be unique, but we just want them to be similar so that they can be a set. And once we get this all sorted out, then we'll be ready to move on to the next step of adding our washi tape. And this is the washi tape that we'll be using today. And this is another one of my favorite ones. It has a bit of that gilding gold on it and it has some koi fish. So it's really cute. And what I want to do is I'm going to be making this triangle shape. So we're just going to stick it straight on and we'll make a cut here. And then we'll also kind of trim as close as we can to the shape of the, the mold. Um, if this type of agate shape isn't uh, the easiest to, for you to, um, to kind of trace around, then obviously you can use round or square or any other shape that you like. Uh, this corner was a bit tricky for me here, so I am just going to very carefully just kind of cut away until I get the shape that I need. And then just make sure that it's accurate and just kind of set it in. So for the other side now, uh, what I want to do is I actually want to kind of camouflage the pattern so it looks like they go together. So I try to kind of line up these flowers along the top. I'm just set in the corner there and I try to align these flowers along the top and I'm going to trim around the flowers so that they kind of match to the other side and it's just not as obvious that we've joined those two pieces together. So. And then now I'm going to just kind of add in those wavy lines. As if you've watched my previous um, tutorial on washi tape in the kintsugi style, I did something very similar. So we just kind of give want to take away those sharp, straight edges because we should want more of a natural form. So uh, just going to do that here and peel back those sections. And once we're done this, we're ready to start adding our outliner. Okay, so we're all set here and we're ready to start adding in the uh, the outliner design. So I'm, again, I'm using my Serenade Relief uh, from Pebio. This is an acrylic style paint and it has a, um, a relief too, which means it kind of sits up and has a three-dimensional texture to it. So this way uh, you can actually feel it and it actually gives that look as well, that it's three-dimensional. And... I uh, will go ahead and just outline our washi tape here. And we'll do the same thing along the bottom. Uh, I didn't include it in this video, but if you guys want to see alternatives to this outliner, I will link it above um, and at the end of the video that you can watch one of my other videos that show you um, a couple other options if you either can't find this outliner or if it's just you not know, really something that's in your budget and you want to find an alternative, I offered a few in another video. So I'll link that so you guys can take a look at that as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll get these lines added in. Um, I was getting a few bubbles in my outliner, mostly because um, it was a tube that I've had from Peter previous, so some air probably got in a little bit. So I just had to kind of get rid of those. And then I'll continue with the rest here. 
And once uh, we're done with this, we will need to leave it to dry for an hour, at least an hour, sometimes a little bit more to kind of depending on your own environment, but basically enough that you can touch it and it's not going to smudge or move or anything like that. So um, for me, that's about an hour, but uh, if you want to be on the safe side, you can leave it a little bit longer. So we'll finish up here and I'll see you on the next step. Okay, so we're all set and our outliner is dry. So we're ready to start filling in the areas here. And the first thing we wanna fill in is this really cool uh, effect that's happening with the orange and the red. And I wanna show you guys these paints. These are Pebeo Prisme Fantasy Paints. And as you can see, I pulled my Instagram that shows that I actually have been using this for quite a while, but it wasn't something I was using too much with resin. It was kind of before when I was doing more porcelain and ceramics. So, um, and as you can see here, I kind of made a chart of some of the colors I was considering for these coasters. And you can see how there's kind of like a cell effect, which is really cool. But the only problem was is some of my paints were, have been around for a couple of years and um, they just weren't giving the effect anymore. So I was really testing them out to make sure they were still working. And to use this is really simple. You literally just need to paint. <laughs> so you take it straight out of the bottle and you paint in your sections. You don't want to do it too thin just because you want the bubble effect to happen, the cell effect to happen. So not overly thick, but on overly thin, just kind of... Um, as you can see, I'm not really spreading it. I'm just more dabbing it into place and leaving it as whatever the thickness of the ink of the paint it is there. So, so that's what we're going to do. And as I work through this piece, you're going to see um, how the cells start to form. It takes about uh, five to 10 minutes for it to really start showing. So as I work through here, you're going to see that in the video, it's actually pretty neat. So, and we're gonna do the same thing with the, the orange. And what we'll do is we're actually gonna be mixing these two colors in this section here. So I'm gonna be placing down this kind of a corally orange color. And then once I finish that, I'm going to come in and add some red along the bottom. So, and so we'll probably go into another speedy time-lapse soon, but as you guys can see, again, I'm just kind of dabbing, I'm not, um, spreading it. I'm not dragging the paint in any kind of way. I'm just kind of dabbing it into place. So this paint is a bit thicker as well. And that's part of um, how the process works with this. I'm not really sure how Pebio did it, but um, it's been a really neat effect. So again, I'm just going to, oh, I made a little mess there. So clean that up. And then once I finish this part here, then I'm going to come in and add the red. So, and I'm just going to kind of add it in separately first along that bottom edge that we're just leaving open there. <laughs> and I just realized here that I actually flipped the, uh, the colors. I had the red on the top before now that the red's on the bottom, but that's okay because again, uh, these can be a little bit unique. So we'll uh, go ahead and add the red. And once we have the red in place, we can kind of swirl them all together a little bit. They'll blend slightly in those areas in its own kind of unique way. It doesn't blend the way normal paints blend. They'll blend and they'll have their cells form at the same time. So, all right, let's go into the time lapse and I'll see you guys on the other side.
right, as we finish up here, um, there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys. And I get a lot of questions about asking of how I clean my brushes since I use brushes for a lot of my pieces. So I use uh, rubbing alcohol or the isopropyl alcohol. And this one here is 95%. Um, anything above 91 is generally good, but I usually try to get 95 or even 97 when I can. Um, I heard some people get 100. I haven't seen that, but that definitely helps to clean the brushes. And now we're ready to fill in the rest of the spaces on our geode. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some clear glass. It's um, these little uh, little chips that I have from Counterculture. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a bit of my gloss varnish. Those of you who've been following me for a while know that I use this for almost everything. And again, I'm going to use it here kind of as an adhesive because it dries clear. It's not going to show through on the resin at all. So, and again, guys, um, those of you who are familiar know that I list uh, the products that I use in the description under this video. So if you're looking for the exact names or anything like that, please check there. I also have a lot of discount codes that I include with the links um, in the products that I have in the list. So definitely check in the description under the YouTube video for those. So we're going to go ahead and we're just adding the chips um, using this little tiny spoon that's super cute and uh, just sitting it on top of the gloss varnish just to kind of hold it in place. So we'll go ahead and we'll get those all in. And there's no rhyme or reason to these here. And I'm really actually hoping that they're going to show up in the, uh, once I add a top coat, just because sometimes these clear pieces don't show up that well and they're more there for a texture. So we'll see how it goes. Um, we will be adding a bit more detail to these as well, but for now, uh, we'll just leave that in there and we'll put a few in the bottom and then we're ready to move on to the next detail. So the next detail that I want to add are these kind of bronze uh, uh, mica flakes. So this, called, this actual color is called Genie's Lamp and it's from Counterculture as well. And these are just really neat looking as well. They just have a really nice shine to them once they um, have dried. So again, when you mix them with the gloss varnish, it just, it looks like you can't really see them as well, but it'll dry clear and it'll be perfectly fine. So we'll add them in, in the line here, just like on the other poster. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I want to add some detail of these along where we added those glass chips. So I'll just finish up this line and then you'll see we'll move on to the next section here. So along just along the edge of those glass crystals, we're just going to just put a little bit there again, just to define the edges and uh, just to bring more detail. You guys know how much I love adding detail to my pieces and, <laughs> and we're nowhere near close to being done yet in terms of the details. I still have a couple more steps to go. So uh, we'll just finish these up and then we'll move on to uh, the next one. Okay, so and as you can, I was just actually pointing out there that the cells are starting to form. So you can see that on the one that we're working on. And now we're using some moon dust glitter again from Counterculture. And uh, again, this is a really pretty kind of a crystal looking glitter and it's not going to stand out too much, but just give us a bit of sparkle in those white areas that we want to keep on the geode. So same process, we add a little bit of that to our 
gloss varnish and we just basically paint it on there. And once that's done, we're going to add some of this blue and green glitter that I got from Michaels. And we're just going to mix those to kind of match the color on the washi tape. And I just want to add a bit of sparkle to the washi tape as well. Um, it's already a really pretty washi tape, but you know, you guys know me with my extra details. So I just wanted a bit of sparkle in the washi tape as well. So it blended a little bit better with the geode. This is a great way to kind of bump up your washi tape if it turns, if you feel like it's, it doesn't have that a little extra, maybe it doesn't have the extra gilding or um, it doesn't have that little bit of sparkle. So you can go ahead and add it to there just like this. All right, and lastly, I am taking a little bit of champagne glitter and I'm just gonna go along the edge of that mica flakes that we added earlier, just to kind of blend those in a little bit more, get rid of that harsh line that we had uh, against the crystals. So just adding that. Once we're done here, we'll leave it to dry over there. So normally we would wait to 12 hours. We had actually just finished painting this one coaster over here, but the first one that I did is already dry. So I'm going to go ahead and add the top coat for, on that one for you guys, because I really want to um, have you guys see how we do this part of the process. And I also want to get this video out to you guys really soon. So we're going to speed run this one here and let the other one dry in its own time. So we'll go ahead and add the top coat and we'll heat it and then get all the bubbles out and then we let it cure and unmold it in the morning. Okay, so I came back to the studio to kind of check in on this guy and see if I can uh, unmold it, which it's ready. But I did notice something here with the Pebio Prisme Fantasy paints that we were using. You can see that this that the color changed a little bit and the cells aren't as noticeable. So that might be the age of my paints showing of um, maybe just something's going wrong with the reaction there. Um, so that might be something you need to test with your resin just in case. I've never had that problem before and you can see the red at the bottom is just fine. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to have to do some more tests. But overall, I really like the look and I'll finish this up and uh, we'll get some nice pictures. And here we go. So I did add another flood coat to these coasters and then I also painted the edges gold on one. I will be doing the same on the other one but it's still curing with the top coat so I'll leave that for now but I just love the actual final look of these coasters with all the neat details and you know between the washi tape and the glitter and the paint it just all looks so cool and you can actually see that on the second coaster the cells stayed so I'm not really sure what's up with that but in any case I hope you guys really like this technique and if you did don't forget to leave a comment and like subscribe and share thanks so much guys take care bye